Hello, welcome to part 2 on grid search. In this video, we're going to talk about how to manually implement grid search if needed, and some advantages and disadvantages of grid search compared to other methods. I'll upload this file to a GitHub repository and the link will be in the description below. In the last video, we talked about how grid search works from a high level, and also some important parameters in the sklearn grid search CV module. To start implementing things manually, I'll use the same example that the grid search CV module provides, except this time we won't import the module. To start off, we'll import the libraries and the IRS dataset. And I'm putting the data in a pandas data frame just because I find it easier to manipulate data in this format. Since this is a classification problem, when we cross-validate, we might want to use a stratified split so that each fold ends up with an equal class distribution. There are three classes in the training set, each with 50 instances. So if we were to use a five-fold stratified split, each fold should take 10 instances from each class as the test set. For segmenting out 10 data points, we'll simply use the usual list indexing syntax. Now that we have prepared the data, we'll also define a CV result dictionary to store the results as the cross-validation loop executes. I'm just initializing it with some important metrics that we might want to keep track of, but with a manual grid search, you can definitely add more keys to this dictionary and refer back to them when we decide on the best parameter. The first thing we'll need to define is the list of parameter combinations. These are going to define the search space for the CV loop and also help us find the parameters associated with each score. Then just some key metrics such as mean fit time across five folds, scores for each fold, the mean score, and standard deviation across scores for different folds. This iter tools.product method basically takes in a list of iterables and returns all possible combinations with one element from each of the iterables. So in our case, this returns four combinations with linear kernel c equals 1, linear kernel c equals 10, radial basis kernel c equals 1, and radial basis kernel c equals 10. That will be all for the preparation, and now we can set up the actual CV loop. So we start by looping through all the different parameter combinations. With each parameter combo, we'll initialize a new support vector classifier with this set of parameters. We we'll also define two empty lists to store the model fit time and scores for each of the five folds. Then for each fold from 0 to 4, we'll split out a test set that takes 10 instances from each class in a way such that each fold takes the 10 instances immediately succeeding the last fold so that the test sets are going to be destroyed between different folds. Once we have the test set, the respective training set for this fold will simply be the rest of the data. We'll fit the model with the current set of parameters for the current training set, clock the fit time, predict on the current test set, and evaluate the result. Just for illustration purposes, I'm using the simple accuracy score, but this will be the place to use any customized scoring method. We'll append both the time used to fit this model as well as the score to the two lists. We'll also record a score of this fold to our dictionary. Once all of the five folds have been predicted as the test set, We'll take the average of the fit times, scores, and the standard deviation of the scores, and that will be the end of one iteration. This loop will continue to iterate through different parameter combinations and the search space. The result of this loop is a filled up version of the CV result dictionary, which provides the same information as the grid search CV module, but with the obvious benefit of more room for customization. One example off of the top of my head where you might want to use such customization is if your scoring function somehow requires inputs other than just a list of grand truth values and a list of predicted values. One obvious caveat of using grid search is that the search space can be overwhelmingly large. Consider tuning for just five parameters, each with 10 different candidate values. That's going to give us a search space of 10,000, which means 10,000 times of fitting a model. So this is where random search comes in. In the next video, I'll quickly go through random search, including sklearn's random search CV and a manual implementation. Then we'll move on to analyzing the downfall of both grid search and random search as a segue into genetic evolution-based and Bayesian-based search algorithms.